Okay, we are here in the at the front of that's the gatehouse of Thornton Abbey. The abbey itself lies beyond that, but that's the gatehouse, and it's a National Trust property, I believe. We, being me and Donald, Donald Trumper. This is an Donald is an XLH Ironhead Harley Davidson, and I'm going to tell you the things I don't like about the XLH. First and foremost, I've got to say, absence of a kickstart. That's just criminal. Um, I mean, for a start, if the battery goes, you're immobile. If the regulator goes, the battery will go, you're immobile. There's so many things that can kill the battery. And you're left with a giant motorcycle-shaped paperweight, which is no use to man or beast. Um, I can only assume it's penny-pinching on AMF's part. This is a late 70s one, obviously, when things got really dire at the company. But I'm definitely putting a kickstart on there. You need a new main shaft, uh, various gubbins, and then you're good to go with the cover with the hole in it, obviously. So that's happening. Um, other thing, you'll hear a lot of people say this on all Sportsters, irrespective of year or variety, is the tank's too damn small. It's um, very limiting. You're always filling up. Um, you get a, I mean, we're about 300 miles from where I come from here, and it's every, every fuel station and. <laughs> I'm not going to go on, you get the picture, this tank is way, way, way too small, so that will be changed. Um, the other main gripe I've got with this is, it's, a, it's quite a vibratey bike, it does rattle, but your hands and feet should not be going numb. If they are, then search for the cause of excess vibration, because there will be one, I promise you. Um, that's what this was like when I first put it together. But the, um, after a while... Your hands and feet shouldn't go numb, maybe your throttle hand in heavy tank traffic after a long time, that's acceptable, but beyond that, find out why it's shaking so much. Um, but one thing that you'll never be able to change is the footrests are bolted to the engine, which I think is terrible. That's an awful idea, it's a big bolt as well, it goes right into it on both sides. Um, I just think that's, that could have been done better. <laughs> just a rail under the, under the engine, um, coming up, you know, like any normal motorcycle. Why attach the footrests to the shakiest part of the entire construction? If you pull the, f if you pull the clutch in and kill the engine going downhill, this is smooth as. It is literally, it's just the engine that makes it shake. Nothing else. It's not, not inherently shaky. So yes, I don't like that. Overall though, as you'll probably have picked up if you've seen any of these videos, I do love this bike. But I do not understand those three things, and two of them I will be changing. The fourth, I can't do anything about. It's the fact that the crankcase is vertically split. Every vertically split crankcase leaks oil. And it's embarrassing because I'm not an antisocial person and I don't like it that I park it up at Sainsbury's and it leaves oil. That's not good. But you can't do a lot about this. My BSA was the same, well both BSAs were the same. Um, every horizontally split crankcase I've ever had. CD175, GS550, SR500, CB200, doesn't matter. They're all fairly oil tight because um, they're a pan holding oil. They're not two pans squished together trying to hold a stop oil falling out the bottom. So that's it, four faults with the XLH iron head. Other than that, if you like old bikes it's pretty damn good.